Montana Talks here. here. Live and local. This is Montana Talks with Aaron Flint. Talking about the issues that matter to Montana statewide. This is Montana Talks with Aaron Flint. Ah, it's Semper Gumby, always flexible. Yeah, got to always be flexible in talk radio because uh, we're unscripted. And we try not to do a bunch of cookie cutter stuff. Uh, you guys remember Velma? Velma from uh, from Kalispell back in the day, one of our great callers. Anyway, I, I remember one of the greatest pieces, uh, pieces of advice Velma gave me very early on in my talk radio career. Is, we don't need this cookie cutter stuff. Let's keep the phone lines open and eh, get some guests from time to time. At, None of that cookie cutter stuff, and and it is such a, such great words of wisdom. Uh, she was always uh, always fun to talk to. But uh, Semper Gumby today, uh, I, what we want to do, we want to put together a special Memorial Day program uh, for Monday's show. I mean, I know we could just you know have a a best of Montana talks with you know some of the great conversations that we've had over the past few months, but we want to put together a special Memorial Day show and. Interesting. I was looking at my calendar here because I, I want to pull up some of my archived audio. Ten years ago, uh, ten years ago, back on well, just just three days shy of ten years ago. Anyway, I think it was uh, I think it was May twenty sixth of twenty fourteen. I did a special Memorial Day radio show live from the Fort Peck Summer Theater. And we had just an incredible lineup. Kenny Newton, uh, World War II uh, uh, veteran, uh, came down and joined us on the show. Uh, he was a, a, a POW in World War II, and so it was such an honor to get a chance to meet him. He recently just passed away uh, here in, in the past few months. Um, got to talk with him. Uh, Rob O'Neill, do you know that name, Rob O'Neill? Uh, of course you do. Rob O'Neill, the Navy SEAL who killed Osama bin Laden. He was the keynote speaker at that Memorial Day ceremony that day. But remember, this was May of 2014. We, uh, the the world, did not yet know that he was the guy who killed Osama bin Laden. We knew that he had been involved in some other high-profile uh, operations like the, the Captain Phillips uh, rescue and, and much more. Um, and, man, he gave such an incredible – I wonder if I recorded – if anybody recorded his speech. I should see if we can get audio of his speech. That would be incredible. Maybe Kelly and Glasgow can track that one down for us. But uh, but we had an incredible lineup all, all the way around. And, and one um, fallen warrior from Montana that we particularly remembered that Memorial Day – uh, was Staff Sergeant Aaron Holliman, a Green Beret with the 5th Special Forces Group from Glasgow, Montana. Uh, and uh, anyway, we had his his ODA A-Team Special Forces team leader uh, on the show with us 10 years ago. Um, maybe I can pull up that archive audio for you on Monday as well. Uh, but all that to say that um, we want to remember Staff Sergeant Holliman again this Memorial Day because uh, this August will mark uh, 20 years uh, since since he gave his life for our country in Iraq. And so uh, my friend Parker Hahn is now a full bird colonel serving on active duty. Uh, we are going to try to sneak him on yesterday. We're going to try to sneak him on today. He'll be with us tomorrow. Later this hour of the show, though, um, we've got uh, another great American, Nick Jones. He lives in Bozeman. Silver Star recipient. He's got Talon's Reach Foundation. He's going to join us around 840. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we got a lot of ground to cover. We've got phone lines open for you and more. So we'll get to your phone calls right after this. Securing America. A Wednesday hearing before Senate Appropriations Subcommittee focused on the security of the U.S. Capitol and budget funding for the Capitol Police Department for fiscal year 2025. U.S. Capitol Police Chief Thomas Manger says the good news is... I can confidently tell you the Capitol is safer today than it was prior to January 6th. The bad... Our country is in the midst of a historical rise in threats. The chief explaining the difference in incidents his officers are facing and investigating. Over the past year, we've seen a dangerous rise in acts of violence against members of Congress, their families, and staff. He says that the challenge for his department, therefore, is rising. I think what we have in place is working, uh, but it's the, it's the volume that we've got to address. Which is why he testified getting full funding and an increase in staff is crucial. We've got a good system. Uh, we just need more people. Kevin Uretzky, Fox News. 
Tatanka. No, he didn't get that name from a Kevin Costner movie. Tatanka Cigar had a great time catching up with Ken Weinheimer with Rocky Mountain Liquor. Check out that story. Go to MontanaTalks.com. He joined us in studio. It really is a great cigar. Uh, plus, we got uh, more content for you. This one's kind of crazy. A worker in Yellowstone National Park left a can of bear spray on his dashboard. Look at the hole that thing blew in the windshield. That story and more MontanaTalks.com. If you can plan barbecues and weddings, you can plan to protect yourself from a natural disaster. Sign up for local alerts, prepare an emergency kit, and make a family communications plan. Get started at ready.gov slash plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is where Montana talks. Montana talks with Aaron Flint. Yeah, Nick Jones, what an incredible guy. And just how I ended up meeting him by chance, it was uh, so incredible. We were at the SHOT Show down in Las Vegas, I think two or three years ago now. I think it was two years ago. We were at the SHOT Show in Las Vegas, and, and my buddy Steve Rast, a Marine Corps veteran, at a Bozeman who's always down at the SHOT Show every year, and he's a big part of you know these veteran entrepreneur efforts, Bunker Labs, et cetera. He said, hey, you you got to interview my buddy Nick Jones on the radio. He's an incredible Marine, uh, incredible background. He started the Talents Reach Foundation in Bozeman. And, and I was like, yeah, send him on over. Because you guys remember when we were covering the SHOT Show, it's like, holy cow, we were crazy busy. And then we had John Jackson, the Joker, from uh, Twitter with us there for the last couple of years as well. And, and it's like, man, we have nonstop content of Montanans and, and some other high-profile folks that are rumbling through the SHOT Show, like Donald Trump Jr. and others that joined us this year on the program. Uh, but, man, when I'll tell you what, when, when Nick Jones sat down in that chair and we got to talking, I, I about had had to step away from the mic and uh, go regain my composure. It was just such a, a powerful message that he shared. And Anyway, um, we're, we're going to catch up with him here later this hour of the show and integrate that into our Memorial Day special program for uh, for the rest of our audience across the state as well. But uh, we got the phone lines open for you right now. If you got something you want to talk about, and let's jump right into the phone lines. Uh, uh, Ken in Bozeman, first up. Ken, thanks for the call. And what's on your mind? Hey, good morning, Aaron. Coast Guard Ken here. Um, I just wanted to remind you of Sergeant Atkins. Um, he uh, threw himself on a grenade there and saved his platoon or people in his group. Uh, and they ended up naming the uh, VA clinic after Sergeant Atkins. And I believe his folks still live here in Bozeman. Um, yeah. Not sure. Yeah, well, I see a video here, too, because, yeah, uh, Staff Sergeant Tra Travis Atkins, a Medal of Honor recipient, and uh, pulled it up at uh, Army.mil um, on the Medal of Honor page here. And, the, yeah, they've got a video um, where his parents and his son reminisce on his life, his service, and his heroic actions. I, I should see if we can... It's only it's about a five minute long clip. I should see if we can snag that and integrate that into our Memorial Day coverage as well, because uh, uh, it looks like a, a, a well produced, uh, uh, well produced uh, a video here as well. But uh, yeah, no, man, it's uh, thanks for calling in. And uh, yeah, what else did you want to share with our listeners? Uh, no, I just wanted to say that uh, and wish everybody a, a safe weekend. All right. Yeah, well, thanks for calling. Yeah, um, I pulled up this Medal of Honor page here. Travis Atkins, born December 9th, 1975 in Great Falls, Montana. He moved with his parents, Jack and Elaine, to Bozeman in 1981. He was an avid outdoorsman, loved to hunt, fish, snowmobile, and camp. Uh, enlisted on November 9th in 2000. And, uh, of course, went to basic infantry training at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia. Got assigned to the 101st uh, Airborne Division, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Deployed with the 101st to Kuwait in early March of 2003. And then participated in the invasion of Iraq later that month as an infantry fire team leader. He was honorably discharged from the Army in December of 2003. But then, you know, after coming back home to Montana, attending the University of Montana in Missoula, Two years later, he once again answered the call to serve, re-enlisting in the U.S. Army in December 2005 and reassigned to Delta Company in the same battalion and deployed to Iraq again in August of 2006. 
He was killed in action on June 1st, uh, 2007. His awards and decorations include the Distinguished Service Cross, the Bronze Star Medal, the Purple Heart, the Army Achievement Medal, and, and of course, the list goes on uh, as well. Of course, the Combat Infantryman Badge uh, as well. But, uh, yeah, here, here he is listed uh, on the, the Medal of Honor uh, page here as a Medal of Honor recipient. No, so thank you, Ken, so much. Uh, you know, sometimes we've done a live show on, on Memorial Day. Um, we're going to put together a special program for this Memorial Day. But, uh, yeah, um, but, man, I, I love the fact that you're that – you're, uh, at remembering our heroes uh, e- even ahead of time, uh, you know, and uh, so that folks head into the Memorial Day weekend remembering why we get to enjoy this uh, beautiful uh, state that we call Montana and uh, why we get to, you know, to live in a, you know, free country and, and why uh, we want to keep this a free country as well. So, hey, you know, with the phone lines open, if you want to call in and talk about the big news of the day, you can. Or if you got somebody you want to remember, just like Ken and Bozeman uh, remembered Sergeant Atkins, feel free to call in as well or send us a message on our Montana Talks app. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, we got Nick Jones uh, joining us at 840. And then I think tomorrow, I think my friend Parker Hahn, He's from Glasgow, Montana. Uh, he's on active duty right now as we speak, full bird colonel. But uh, he was good friends with Aaron Holliman in high school. And then I, I think they even got to serve together uh, for a tour or two uh, on, on active duty. And so uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, Aaron Holliman uh, was with the 1st Battalion, 5th Special Forces Group, uh, also in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. He was killed in action uh, during Operation Iraqi Freedom on August 30th, uh, 2004, uh, when an IED exploded near his vehicle. A native of Glasgow, Montana, Holliman enlisted in the Army in June 1996 as an infantryman. Uh, and then, of course, uh, was selected for Special Forces training in 2000. Uh, and, uh, and then upon co- completing his training as an SF medical sergeant, he was assigned up to 5th Special Forces Group in September of 2003 and then quickly deployed to Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Uh, uh, yeah, so we're going we're gonna, to uh, pay tribute to him. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. 20 years. It'll be 20 years this August. So that's uh, just one of too many that, that we'll be remembering uh, this Memorial Day. All right, quick break here on Montana Talks. We'll get into the big news of the day right after this, 406-294-0970. Serving the great state of Montana, from the peaks of the Beartooths to the banks of the Clark Fork River. Montana Talks with Aaron Flint. President Trump is headed to the Bronx. It, you know, can't nobody tie Trump down, right? It, you know, it's uh, the, the way that this political persecution of uh, President Trump has backfired on uh, on the radical left here, on uh, Biden and the rest of them, is just hysterical. But uh, did you guys hear what AOC uh, had to say here? Uh, she said the quiet part out loud once again. And by the way, he's doing it in the South Bronx not to make a point, but because he's got court. And the man practically has the legal version of an ankle bracelet around him, and he can't leave the five boroughs because he always has to be in court. And so it is truly an embarrassment to him. And I am looking forward to the response of everyday Bronxites talking about how they feel about him coming to their back. Yeah, so there's AOC, uh, you know, you know, basically trying to mock this uh, political persecution of Trump. But here's the deal. Every time Trump gets out into New York City, he gets an overwhelmingly positive response. And so, yeah, he's headed to the Bronx. Uh, Fox and Friends earlier this morning, uh, you know, one of their one of their hosts made the point like that. She actually went out into the into the Bronx. It was Rachel Campos Duffy, who's been here to Montana. Uh, we, we interviewed her on the show a few years ago when she was uh, in Billings uh, speaking at Rocky Mountain College. But Rachel Campos Duffy says says she actually went out to the Bronx and she interviewed like over a dozen people. And there was only one guy that had something negative to say about Trump. And, and she said that guy seemed like he was off his rocker. But as for AOC, 
remember, AOC has gotten protested practically everywhere she goes. And so AOC has to hide from her own constituents. And yet here's Donald J. Trump right in her own backyard. And by the way, well, let me uh, cue up the story for you here. Sorry that you don't want to hear AOC again. First, Donald Trump went to that bodega in Harlem. Now he's moving uptown to the South Bronx, where Ronald Reagan was the last Republican to win New York and probably the last Republican candidate to speak in the Bronx. Now, who was the last Republican uh, presidential candidate to win the Bronx? That would be Calvin Coolidge, okay, who served as president that year. Johnson Johnson debuted its first mass-produced ready-to-use Band-Aids, which some critics say Biden needs to fix his campaign after losing the black, Hispanic, and youth vote in men, just to name a few demographics. All right. Yeah, so look at all the support for Trump in the Bronx. Uh, But apparently there was a story earlier this morning that I think Fox News Radio had reported where uh, the Democrats are going to try to hold a... Trump is not wanted rally. And uh, Tim and Savage sent us a message shortly after that news break on the Montana Talks app. He says, let me get this straight. The party of inclusiveness is going to hold a someone is not wanted rally. (laughs) A great message there from Tim and Savage. Let's go to Dan in Polson. Dan, what's going on? Good morning, Aaron. Uh, Morning. First of all, I'd like to thank you for your uh, service. Uh, means a lot to me that you are doing what you do on the radio. I wanted to ask if you've ever considered coming to uh, Polson to have a show. Oh, yeah. You know what? Because I'm trying to think. We, we do our show uh, out on, you know, we take our show out on the road, out on the town all the time. And, uh, yeah, we've done a, f- a few shows from, uh, you know, from out on the town in Kalispell and Columbia Falls. But, yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I'm trying to think if, if we've done the show from Polson yet. I don't think we have. We need to do that one of these days. Well, thank you for that. And also, I would like to have you weigh in in support of uh, Gail Decker for the county commissioner seat here. He's the incumbent Republican, and he's done a fine job pushing it back against uh, state and federal government uh, intrusiveness in here in our small area. Um, he's being opposed in the primary uh, by uh, a couple of Republicans that are um, most likely likely plants, and uh, we'd sure like to have you support him. Good, please. Yeah, who's who's the primary opponent there? Yeah, I haven't uh, followed that race yet, unfortunately. A fellow by the name of uh, Josh Chemical and uh, Krantz. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to read up on on that race a little bit more. Uh, speaking of county commissioner races, uh, so I, you know, we I did a couple of events in Great Falls the other day on Monday, and I saw I saw a couple uh, campaign signs uh, for uh, for county commissioner. Uh, I saw uh, campaign signs for uh, for Ray uh, Grokowski uh, running as a Republican for county commissioner for Cascade County Commissioner, and then I saw uh, Eric Heinbaugh. Uh, also uh, running as a Republican for county commissioner. And and uh, anyway, I'll, I'll have to look into that race a little bit more, um, you know, because, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ray Grokowski, of course, solid conservative. Um, Eric Heinbach, uh, good guy. Uh, you know, I've known Eric for a number of years, but I'm like, I thought he was a Democrat. Uh, he's running as a Republican for county commissioner. So but then again, there's a lot of former Democrats who are bailing on the Democrat Party right now. So I don't know. I, I, that, that's uh, but I just thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, I thought he was a Democrat. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, some some wild races all across uh, the state. That's for sure. Well, thank you for your time, and um, you have a good day. Hey, you too. All right, thanks uh, Thanks for calling in, Dan. And, uh, hey, send me a message uh, on our Montana Talks app or email. Uh, if we do the radio show live from Polson, where should we do the show from? Or, or of course, you know, we'll do, we can ask our friends at uh, – at uh, KJJR, they always know the great the great spots to go as well. Uh, in fact, I was I was chatting with with Eric, uh, and and uh, he's got a fishing boat that we could do the show from. Maybe maybe we maybe we start in Polson, and then we we hop on the fishing boat, and then uh, start the show in Polson, and then uh, 
do the rest of the show while we're out on the lake fishing at the same time. Uh, that'd be kind of fun. Uh, so that's something we want to do. Uh, yeah, we're going to do, I'm going to do a big tour here in about mid June. So we'll be looking, we're going to, we're going to hit the whole, uh, you know, you know, a whole bunch of uh, big stops along the way. So that'll be fun. We'll tell you more about that. Uh, once uh, the plan uh, starts to take shape. Uh, 406-294-0970 is the number for you. Uh, a few more minutes here before we catch up with Nick Jones. Uh, let's see. Uh, back to uh, Trump and the uh, political persecution of Donald J. Trump. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he's headed to the Bronx. Uh, Lara Trump was on Fox News last night, and she made a great point about how Joe Biden is using taxpayer money to camp uh, the campaign. Yeah, well, I mean, it's totally unacceptable, obviously, to have Joe Biden utilizing taxpayer money to keep his party in power. I mean, they're going to college campuses, Martha. These are liberal hotbeds. We know exactly what the ratio is of liberals to conservatives on most college campuses out there. And this is a problem, not just for us as a party, but for us as a country, because we have a, a whole host of people, millions and millions of people in this country who currently have a lot of questions about our electoral process. People need to understand and believe that we have free, fair and transparent elections. Things like this just go to further a notion that they will not be fair, that things are very heavily weighed on one side. And, and yes, it is something we're paying very close attention to. What I'll tell you is that because they are doing things like this, it's pretty clear that they're very worried on the Democrat side. You look at the poll numbers for Donald Trump right now. You look at the fact that tomorrow he has a, 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 a rally in the Bronx, in the South Bronx. The last time we saw a Republican candidate for president of the United States in the South Bronx, it was Ronald Reagan in 1980, and everybody remembers what happened after that. They are worried because their candidate is flawed. He has failed the American people, and people remember life was a lot better with Donald Trump in office. That's right, and that's why black voters are uh, fleeing the Democrat Party and uh, signaling their intent to vote for Donald J. Trump. Hispanic voters doing the same. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, you know that radio host, the black radio host, Charlemagne? He calls himself Charlemagne the God, but it sounds blasphemous if you ask me. So I'll just call him Charlemagne. Hope he's okay with that. Well, frankly, I don't care. Uh, you know, I'm sure you're a decent guy, but uh, I'm going to just call you Charlemagne. Uh, but anyway, Charlemagne was on The View with the wacky liberal women of The View, and they were so mad at this guy. They were lecturing this brother. I mean, they, they were just lecturing and talking down to this brother. Why won't you endorse Biden? Just do it. Just endorse Biden. So, of course, he, he tries to take shots at, you know, at Trump. And, and, and but it, it was just hilarious to see how much this guy does not want to endorse Joe Biden. I think he's trying to straddle the fence. I think he's trying to, you know, ride right down the middle of the road because he knows that his listeners, that, that his his uh, black listeners in New York City and elsewhere uh, do not want to support Joe Biden. But but yet he still has to kowtow to these liberal wackos and and try to trash Trump at the same time. Yeah, I, yes, but, 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 but we need you to do it on your show. Well, I think, well, the reality is I think both candidates are trash. So because, I, because I'm, but I am going to vote in November and I'm going to vote my best interest and I'm going to vote who I think, you know, can preserve democracy. So if I think both candidates are trash and I don't feel like, you know, endorsing one, you have to be endorsing the individual or endorse the fact that, hey, we need to go out here and protect democracy. Yeah, anyway, yeah, they were so mad at him. They were so mad that he would not endorse Joe Biden. I think the lack of an endorsement is an endorsement for President Donald Trump. I'm not saying that Charlemagne's going to vote for him, but I'm saying that that I think I think his listeners are already heading that direction because they know exactly how good they had it under Donald Trump and they see how bad they have it under Joe Biden right now. Uh, and then even look here in Montana, you know, when we talk about Hispanic voters voting for Trump, black voters voting for Trump. I mean, the Democrats are desperately trying to hold on to Native American voter support. Who is suffering the most because of Joe Biden and John Tester's policies right now? Native Americans. Our reservations are getting harder hit by the Mexican drug cartels, by inflation, by gas prices, by the war on coal, you name it. 
uh, Native Americans are getting the hardest hit by Joe Biden and John Tester's policies. So black voters are fleeing the Democrat Party. Hispanic voters are fleeing the Democrat Party. And uh, I think more and more of our Native American brothers and sisters are, are doing the same and will do the same, uh, yeah, especially the, the more the truth gets out there. Tatanka. No, he didn't get that name from a Kevin Costner movie. Tatanka Cigar had a great time catching up with Ken Weinheimer with Rocky Mountain Liquor. Check out that story. Go to MontanaTalks.com. He joined us in studio. It really is a great cigar. Uh, plus, we got uh, more content for you. This one's kind of crazy. A worker in Yellowstone National Park left a can of bear spray on his dashboard. Look at the hole that thing blew in the windshield. That story and more. MontanaTalks.com. Look and get taking your calls live 406 294 0970. Montana Talks with Aaron Flint. Well, I'll tell you, it's such an honor to have Nick Jones, the president and founder of Talon's Reach Foundation. He's based in Bozeman, Montana. I got a chance to first meet him at the SHOT Show down in Las Vegas. I think it's been a couple of years ago now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Nick, man, uh, especially as we head into Memorial Day here, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thanks for freeing up some time for us here. Yes, sir. Thanks, Aaron. It's great to hear from you again. Yeah, you know, uh, we'll we'll talk more about you know the history of your organization and and what all you're doing. But but first up, let's get a couple of things on folks' calendars out there. Uh, you've got a big uh, uh, is it your first ever or your second? Uh, you've got a big event coming up, fundraiser coming up in uh, Jackson, Wyoming. I think it's June seventh. Yes, so this is our first annual golf tournament. Uh, we're calling it our Veterans Cup down in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, it's already about sold out. We've got one one team left. Um, but it's, it's an amazing event so far. We've got some amazing sponsors. Uh, Blue Collar Restaurant Group here, local in Bozeman and down there in Jackson, our, our main title sponsor. So we've got some some amazing people already in attendance and uh peak skis also here in bozeman is is one of the main sponsors and um yeah it, it's been amazing traction so far and we're really looking forward to that very cool and the blue collar restaurant group uh so they they probably own a few which west risk restaurants do they have here in bozeman they've got sidewinders tanglewood liberty burger uh, Hachi, it's a sushi restaurant, and then they're about to open a new one called Mary Piglets, which is an amazing Mexican restaurant. They started that one down in Jackson Hole, and it's phenomenal. So that's something to look forward to for the Bozeman community. That's great. Yeah, I got to check out Liberty Burger. Any 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 place called Liberty Burger, if, if, if you <laughs> like you like freedom and beef, uh, you got to be great Americans. I figure there. Oh yeah, yeah, and the. Uh, the onion rings there are to die for, so make sure that you get some of those next time you come in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, tell us about uh, Talon's Reach Foundation. you got a couple of your Eagle Regeneration programs coming up this summer, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, Talon's Reach Foundation, we were founded in 2021, and it was, you know, it was kind of founded after a catastrophic of catastrophic event from a mission that I was on in Iraq in 2020 when I was wounded and lost some teammates. But the, the physical injury was, was one thing, but the mental side of it was a, is a totally different thing that, you know, I didn't really take into account in my earlier years of my career. And I got a, a team together and we established a, a program that we thought would be very beneficial for our special operations forces members. So we take a systematic approach to a, a holistic healing method where we bring them out and we do a lot of education surrounding signs and symptoms that arise during our careers, um, whether that's, you know, the hypervigilance, the anxiety, depression, sleep deprivation, like all of these signs and symptoms that accumulate have this detrimental effect on our personal life, on our professional life, or on our family life. 
So what we want to do is introduce them to different holistic methods to kind of mitigate those and show them that they have the tools and resources within themselves to to help deregulate their own nervous system, to help them kind of quiet all that stuff down when they get home so they can be a, you know, a functioning member of society, a husband, father, a brother, whatever it is, um, you know, we want to be able to give them those tools and resources. And then, obviously, stationed here in Montana, we've got the beautiful outdoors and the mountains and high mountain lakes and rivers, whatever, you know, you can set your mind to. We try to get them outdoors and reconnect with the nature and reconnect with themselves. So it's been an amazing journey so far. And those Eagle Regeneration programs, we have them for five days. We bring out the professionals to do the education, professionals to guide through the modalities. And then we have the the soft led guided discussions. That, so soft is the Special op- Operations Forces. Um, we lead these guided discussions and, you know, help to kind of enable the eagles who are our participants to become vulnerable and, and understand that, like, sharing your story and getting all of this out there isn't necessarily weakness. It's actually a sign of strength and courage, and it shows that, you know, I'm, I'm open and willing to, to heal. I want to take this on full front. So um, it's it's been an amazing, amazing journey, and, you know, we're only just getting started now. So Yeah, there is something about the outdoors, you know, what you're doing with Talon's Reach and then, you know, my friends at Warriors in Quiet Waters in, in the Bozeman area, mm-hmm. and then I've heard Big Sky Bravery is doing some great things as well. I mean, there's something about the outdoors, and there's something about our Montana way of life that is – that is not just an attraction uh, for combat veterans, but it's healing for combat veterans. Absolutely. Yeah, Warriors in Quiet Waters, Big Sky Bravery, they're amazing friends and um, do also doing amazing things for the community as well. Um, they've been nothing but generous and and welcomed us with open arms, and so it, it's been great to have a supporting community of, of donors and that side of things, but also the nonprofits that are doing similar uh, missions to help, you know, the similar community. Uh, we're all kind of working together. You know, there's a main focus and mission to help our nation's warriors to get better so then they can be functioning members of society. So for us to be able to work together and kind of um, support the same community has been pretty great. You mentioned Special Operations Forces. Of course, uh, you served in Special Operations as a Marine Corps Raider uh, in underneath uh, the Marine uh, Special Operations Command, uh, and you were assigned to the 2nd Marine Raider Battalion, Hotel Company Team 2. Uh, and by the way, for those of you who don't know, um, or don't, you know, when we first caught up with, with Nick down at the shot show in Vegas, I mean, just incredible background. And, and our, our friend Steve Rast was telling me a little bit about you before we first met. Uh, uh, Nick has been recognized multiple times, uh, for his service, possesses a Navy cross, a Navy and Marine Corps commendation medal for valor, uh, and a purple heart as well. Uh, following your injuries on March 8, 2020, you underwent six surgeries in, in a year and a half. Uh, Nick, tell us uh, tell us who Talon is, who Talon was, and, and why you decided to name your organization Talon's Reach, especially as we focus on Memorial Day. Yeah, so Talon was one of my closest friends in the Marine Corps. Um, we went to assessment and selection together. And then we went through our um, individual training course to become Marine Raiders together. I actually lived with him and his wife for, for a while, for a number of months. Um, I was kind of a cop surfer then when I was a single Marine. I <laughs> just graduated uh, the Raider school. But him and I went to the same company, just in different teams. And on July 10th of 2017, um, a number of our guys departed to Yuma, Arizona on a C-130. They were flying over Mississippi, and there was a malfunction with the aircraft that um, split the fuselage and killed 16 service members. Um, there was one Navy corpsman or Navy Special Amphibious Reconnaissance corpsman who was attached to MARSOC, um, and then there was six Raiders. So one of those happened to be Talon Leach, who was my best friend. I got that call that night 
and was told I need to go notify his wife, um, which to date, that's been one of the hardest things that I've had to do in my military career, to get dressed up in my service alpha, my service uniform, and to go knock on the door to you know, my best friend's house and tell his wife that he's never coming home. Um, you know, I, I went right back into an operational mindset after the funerals and the way that us as military and special operators in general deal with trauma is to work harder, to lift harder, do, do other things, but then the self-destructive type mannerisms come in where it's the drinking and the, just the hard, rough lifestyle. Yeah. And so that's exactly what I did. And, um, when I ended up redeploying in 2020 and when I lost my two teammates on that operate, the Cape clearance operation when we were hunting ISIS, I also got shot which then created this sort of tumbling effect. And I noticed there was a major defect in my like mental stability. And I was like, I, I need help. And I got with some close friends and I was like, I don't know what's going on, but like, you know, now that I'm getting medically retired, we should, we should do something. So we, we came up with this concept for Talon's Reach Foundation, where we were like, you know, what, what's the name? What should we call it? And then, like a lot of the significance behind, you know, the name of the foundation, the how what we call our participants, there's always like we want some deep meaning behind that. We want to carry on traditions and, you know, keep these guys alive as long as possible. What an incredible way call- to, to honor the fallen. Uh, tell you what, Nick Jones, hold that thought. Nick Jones, Talons Reach Foundation, yeah. hold that thought. Quick break uh, and then we'll come back to you right after this. Your morning espresso starts right here. It's the Sean Hannity Morning Minute. Remember Hillary Clinton? It was a business expense. Remember legal expense? Did she falsify that when she funneled money to Perkins Coie, a law firm, that then gave money to and hired Fusion GPS, an op research firm, that then hired Christopher Steele to put together the lying Russian disinformation dossier? Why isn't Hillary Clinton in trouble? Same time frame, because Hillary Clinton's a Democrat. Hillary Clinton's not a Republican. Hillary Clinton's protected by the system. Donald Trump is persecuted by the system. Don't expect justice in New York. I'm telling you to expect the worst in spite of no evidence of any crime. Basically, you might as well take your Constitution and put it in a shredder. How sad is that? The Sean Hannity Show, from coast to coast, later today. Hey, everybody, your friend Sean Hannity here with a message that is all about your safety. Now, when it comes to protecting yourself, your loved ones, well, it's not about having a firearm. It's about understanding the continuum of force philosophy. Now, picture this. A situation arises where you or a loved one are threatened. Now, instinct may drive you to reach for a lethal means immediately. Now, what if there was a way to effectively defend yourself, de-escalate a situation, without the irreversible consequences of deadly force. Enter Burner, B-Y-R-N-A. It is the less lethal pistol launcher equipped with tear gas and kinetic ammo to incapacitate attackers for up to 40 minutes. Burner is legal in all 50 states. No background check is required and can be shipped right to your door. Now, Burner is proudly American, manufactured in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Just go to burner.com slash Hannity. Right now, you'll get 10% off. That's B-Y-R-N-A dot com slash Hannity. Military Matters. Leonard Francis, better known as Fat Leonard, is a six foot three, three hundred and fifty pound former Malaysian defense contractor who is currently in U.S. custody for defrauding the U.S. government of thirty five million dollars. For more than two decades, he seduced dozens of high ranking U.S. Navy officers for classified information with lavish meals, expensive gifts, and orgies. Washington Post reporter Craig Whitlock has spent the last decade documenting the Fat Leonard scandal and has just released a new book on how he swindled the U.S. military. Leonard knew that he'd give them a taste of the high life by taking them out to these fancy dinners. He organized these sex parties with prostitutes in Asia. By the time they accepted all these extravagant or illicit gifts, they were really enthralled to him. Officers looked the other way when Fat Leonard overcharged for his services. And when he asked for classified information, they gave it. The vast majority of admirals and senior officers got away with either a slap on the wrist from the Navy or... That's creativeplanning.com. 
Brought to you from the Montana Hot Spring Spas, the hot tub company that your friends recommend, Studio. This is where Montana talks. Montana talks with Aaron Flint. All right. Yeah. Um, and if you guys missed my initial conversation uh, with Nick Jones from uh, Talents Reach Foundation, I'm telling you, go back and listen to that original conversation uh, when I first got to meet him. Uh, you know, it, um, it was just incredibly powerful chatting with Nick. And then I think his dad was with him down at the shot show. We got to chat with his dad. But, um, you know, we also remember uh, the uh, Marine Corps uh, crew. Uh, on that KC-130, Yankee 7-2. In fact, uh, my cousin, Anna Johnson, she grew up in the Flathead Valley. Her husband, Brendan, was on that crew uh, that went down on Yankee 7-2 along with with Nick's uh, good friend, Talon. And so, in fact, on June 7th, I'll be at the AVMGR Memorial Monument dedication uh, back at Quantico uh, that same day. Uh, and so yet, yet another remarkable coincidence. Uh, but but then again, you know, Nick, I, I don't know if there are any coincidences in life, really, when it comes down mm-hmm. to it. So remarkable what you're doing. T- t- talk more about w- uh, about the name of Talon's Reach Foundation and how you remember the name in particular. Yeah, so when we were kind of thinking up names, we were, you know, we went back to to everything we've done in our careers and, and we really wanted to signify something special to the community because we didn't want this to just be another nonprofit or some retreat for these guys. We wanted it to be something super impactful and powerful. So we, we started with, hey, we want to call all the participants eagles. And uh, an eagle is a term in the special operations community that we, we refer to Americans with. Um, and so then from there, it was like, you know, what? how perfect would it be to, to honor Talon's name and, and, you know, call it Talon's reach? And so it's like us as eagles using our, our reach, our grasp to reach out to the new, to the old, to the, you know, the present and, you know, use our talons as our grip, you know, and pick them up when they're down. And so that's kind of like one of those metaphors and significant things that we use in this uh, organization to make it something super special. Um, so then Talon's Reach was born, and all of our participants that come through are, are called Eagles. In our par- programs, we call the Eagle Regeneration Program. So um, with that, yeah, it, it's um, – Every day that we, we think of it, you know, we get to honor those guys who have fallen and then we get to honor the guys who are currently serving. And um, it, it does, it means a lot every day that we, you know, get to practice this mission and to help other guys, like guys and gals. Um, it, it's been truly amazing. With, uh, you know, with about a minute and a half or so to go here, obviously, you know, we always want to remind people uh, Memorial Day, this is about the fallen. You know, Veterans Day is, is you know, where we honor all veterans, uh, Armed Forces Day, honoring all who serve, but Memorial Day is for the fallen. Uh, any, anything else you want to share with a, a minute or so to go here uh, for our friends across the state? Yes. So it is pretty unfortunate that we only get one day to honor our fallen. Um, these guys have made the ultimate sacrifice, whether they've been killed in action, missing in action, or killed in training. They have sacrificed and committed their lives to this country and to this nation and to you as an American. They have put everything on the line for us to live the way that we we can today. I'm getting emotional, Aaron. Um, And every day that I wake up, I, I think of the sacrifices that they've made and that I've been fortunate to make for my family. And with that, I just want everyone listening to not only take that or to not only take Memorial day to think about the fallen, but do it, do it more, do it often, speak their names, go visit memorials, go visit their sites, you know, keep their memories alive because they didn't just do this for one day of recognition. They did this for us to live a lifetime of freedom. That's right. So, Some, something to think about as you're enjoying that beautiful scenery here in God's country this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, TalonsReachFoundation.org. Nick Jones in honor. Thanks again.